What's up everyone, welcome back to the finale of Let's Play Mega Man X. I'm going to be starting off in Sigma's Fortress Part 2. And that sounded a lot more exciting than what it actually is. All this is is just shooting the buster. You know, same old stuff. Oh man, Mega Man X is too repetitive. It's really not though. I love using the homing missile here. It's so useful for just knocking stuff out of the sky. Plus, since nothing actually uses the homing missile as its weakness anymore, since it was Boomer Kwanger's weakness and we faced him in Sigma 1, there's uh, no reservations about wasting that ammo. It's actually pretty handy. Now, I, can't, I could Hadouken Chill Penguin. I almost called him Flame Penguin for some reason. And let's see about that. I, I at least want to ignite him a couple times first, since we didn't get to do that yet. Oh, I love how he just bursts into flames. I always imagine it's the tank on his back, like, rupturing. Oh, he did damage to me! I can't duke at him now! Oh, well. I mean... I guess this is the difference between getting shot... ...and suffering... ...and getting burned alive. At least this... I guess that's the closest equivalent you could get in a world full of robots and androids. Or, um... Yeah, androids. That's right. Do they feel pain? Why would they be designed to feel pain? That'd be terrible. Like, why would you design a robot to feel pain? I get why that... that... That sense is is present in humans. It alerts it, it alerts us to danger, but robots don't need that that type of, of sensory perception to to be alerted to danger. I'm all, I'm presupposing that they do feel pain for for the sake of this argument. Uh, Chill Penguin is dead, and that is sad, and no one will mourn him. Man, I feel. Awfully sadistic. Anyway, let's just go ahead and murder people and, um... I think I was calling them carriers a while back. Ride armors. Not carriers. Carriers have not yet arrived. Now, while we climb up here, we could just charge Sting Chameleon's weapon, and... Again, it makes the ascent up this little section here just way, way easier. Even though it's not that bad, it's just... It's a matter of not getting knocked off of walls and shit. Oh, right, but Storm Eagle's weakness is this. Also, the uh, the stage boss shares this weakness. Whoops. Oh, well. Storm Eagle, I know, does take a ton of damage from his weakness in particular. So we actually shouldn't burn through all of that much energy for this weapon. Is there... Wait a minute, I, I don't think I ever noticed this before. Okay, it went down by one. It didn't go down that time. It looks like it's going down every other time I fire it? I've never noticed that before. Is that... Is that supposed to happen? Is Stink Chameleon's weapon supposed to use less energy? Or do all weapons use energy like that? I feel like... I may have been missing something for, like, 20 years. Oh. No, no. Is the electric spark there? I fired it twice and it used energy both times. I guess that's just unique to Sting Chameleon's weapon. Or the emulator I'm playing on is very buggy, which I'm not going to discount because every time I, play, I try to play Super Defense Force, on uh, this emulator, or at least it might be the ROM that's messed up. Every time I play my uh, ROM of Super Earth Defense Force, it I I it puts me in God mode. Anyway, this is Rang the Bangda, Rang the Bangda, the Wall Boss. So he's composed of two eyes and a nose, and you destroy both eyes, and you get locked in with the nose. Or, after a couple of cycles of attacks from each eye, the walls will just close in automatically for a little bit, like you saw. You can destroy the nose first, 
and the walls will stay closed in. So it it's really hard to see the eyes moving if you do that. So generally, you want to destroy both eyes and then just finish the nose off. And it should just be one more shot, because he only has three health. And yeah, Rangdabangda is also weak to Syncameleon's weapon, and just like that, that is another level of Sigma's Fortress out of the way. Two more to go. Really, only one more, because Sigma's Fortress 4 is just the Velgarder fight and the two versions of Sigma. Spoilers, there are multiple forms of the final boss. As if that wasn't completely obvious that that was going to happen. So now, this is by far the longest of the, uh, the Sigma Scorcher stages. And it's also the most packed with boss they, bosses. They just cram everything into this one. There's a neat little trick you can do here. I can't remember off the top of my head how to execute it. You can skip the entire armored, uh, armored armadillo refight here by somehow just dashing across and getting to the opposite door here on the right. And you just bypass the fight for some reason. He doesn't spawn. And I can't quite remember right now how to do that. It's been a while since, I sp ha since I've sped run this game. Speed ran? What is the past tense of that? I I'm guessing it's speed ran. Speed run. I don't know. None of that sounds right. It's going to be another one of those weird grammar episodes. But just like that. Oh yeah, and you saw the Hadouken at work there. So yeah, it... Like I said, it one-shots anything, bosses included, and this is the Sting Chameleon refight. I'm trying to remember what the order of the refights are. I think it goes Sting Chameleon now, obviously. Um, then Launch Octopus? Flame Mammoth? I think that's all that's left. No, there's, there's one more I'm missing. It's Spark Mandrill next, and then Octopus. So I think you go... There's one refight in Sigma 1, two in Sigma 2, and then it's five here, which is just a little bit silly. It's not quite evenly allocated. You would be a really sick mode, like it, maybe not something to put in the main game, but a bonus would be if they had a mode where you just fought all of the bosses at once in one huge room. That'd be so sick. And also probably a little bit impossible. Like at that point, when you have eight bosses abilities all going off at once, it probably becomes too random to control. Also, you can pretty much just freeze, uh, permafreeze Spark Mandrill here, here. Cause you, as you can see, the shotgun ice freezes him literally and does tons and tons of damage. There is, if you time it well, he'll only move about a frame. If you're timing it like I am, he gets maybe a couple frames through his attacks, but it always resets his attacking animation or his attack cycle. So if he starts doing his, his dash punch and you freeze him mid attack, when he becomes unfrozen, he'll choose a new attack. He won't just continue the, uh, the animation from the, from the attack he pre previously chosen. Oh god, the fish will not break. I do love that the fish and that the fish pop like balloons. I do want to refill my cutter ammo here. Because the boomerang cutter is pretty important. It It's not a uh, flame mammoth's weak weakness and it's not launch octopus's weakness, but it does serve a function in both of those fights and it is the weakness for the um, for the D-Rex boss at the end of the, at the end of the fortress. Uh, I believe I already demonstrated what the boomerang cutter does for launch octopus. It cuts his tentacles off and stops him from doing the whirlpool attack. Uh, if he starts spamming that, I'll cut his tentacles off. Or if I just get frustrated, I might... Yeah, let's just do it, why not? Oh, 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 dodge it, dodge it, yeah! properly dodging and shit, and then, you know what I just realized? Went through, I went through this whole stage and didn't take damage up until Launch Octopus, which is pretty typical for me. 
the weird thing about Launch Octopus's weakness, which is the, uh, the roll shield from Armored Armadillo, is that while it does pretty good damage to him, it... I feel like I take more damage when I use it. Because you have to really spam it hard and waste a lot of energy to avoid all the missiles if you're just doing the spam strategy. Otherwise, you actually have to gasp, avoid the missiles. Because the missiles will just eat the shield up when you fire it. So instead of doing damage to Launch Octopus himself, if he fires missiles and you fire the shield at the same time, then you just waste a shield and blow the missiles up with them. So that's a bit of a pain. And because you have limited weapon weapon energy, weapons. You have the limited weapons. They're taking our gurns, our mega bursters. Because you have limited weapon energy, it's not really sustainable to just spam the cut uh, the shield at him. And you just saw. I don't think I did this the first time I fought uh, um, Flame Mammoth. You cut his trunk off with the boomerang cutter, which is pretty cool. And as if the tornado wasn't useful enough already, it's also his weakness. They should have just left Flame Mammoth with no weakness to make up for the fact that the, the tornado is so good otherwise. It didn't need to also be a boss weakness. Oh, it's so overpowered. It's so wonderfully, wonderfully overpowered. Now that's all the eight Maverick refights out of the way, and the two uh, Sigma Fortress 1 and 2 bosses out of the way. Now we just have D-Rex standing in between us and the start of the Sigma encounter, or the series of encounters that makes up the Sigma fight. Ooh, there's a little bit of a visual glitch going on there. I'm assuming that's the ROM. Assuming that's the ROM. I don't think it's... Yeah, I don't think it can be anything else. Also, I'm not sure if I'm going to have enough cutter ammo to completely finish him. It shouldn't matter, though. Like, I could just do this with the X-Buster, but this just makes it quicker. It doesn't actually change the fight significantly. Like, it's not making him go into a real animation or anything crazy like that. Now I just gotta dodge that. Yeah! Oh no, didn't dodge that one. Oh, he only is... Well, without weakness, he has like two hits left. And bounce off the wall, yeah. Finish that finish that shit off in style. I just know it's it's also bugging my health bar out a little bit. Whenever the explosions happen. Excellent, excellent, excellent. I think it only took like thirteen minutes, it looks like, to get through uh Sigma two and Sigma three. Which is, by speedrunning standards, pretty slow, but otherwise, it's not a bad pace to go. Now, we get to listen to this awesome music for the next, I don't know, 20 seconds while we climb the tower. So I'll just shut up for a minute. I love how Sigma has such a twisted, warped worldview that I'm somehow the betrayer. He's the one who leads the Mavericks. Who are... Like, the name Maverick literally implies that they have gone rogue. And they have betrayed their function, their original purpose. Even though they do technically have free will. Still, it, it, it's a little hard to rationalize that as something other than Sigma being the one who is the betrayer. Anyway, this is his pet, who is apparently very good at dealing with betrayers. Doesn't seem so... hot so far. By the way, the dog's name was Velgarder, and the weakness was obviously Shotgun Ice. You can also cause him to go into a real animation with a fully charged up purple X-Buster Beam. Purple Stinky Beam. Remember, our good friend, Purple Stinky Beam. It's like wacky waving inflatable arm flailing tube man, except with a deadly purple laser. 
Now we have a cross between Luke Skywalker and Buzz Lightyear. There is um, there is a Sigma figurine that just recently came out that looks even more like Buzz Lightyear because I think it also has like some purple accent somewhere. Oh, it's really cool though. This this is one of those fights that, unfortunately, once you know what's going on with it, becomes trivial. But when you when you just play this game for the first time. It seems like there's so much more going on than there actually is. Sigma only really does a few things. He dashes up to you, and if you're in front of him when he does that, he takes a swipe at you with the lightsaber. Or the beam saber, I should be saying. Even though it does look exactly like the green lightsaber. Uh, he does the wall dashes, and he does a little ineffective... laser beam attack from the dot on his head. Oh, he actually hit me. Also, when he does smash into you, he does a ton of damage, even with a 50% reduction. Like, look how much that took off. I took minor damage from Velgarder, but that took, like, a huge chunk off. His final form also does insane damage. Which is why, as a kid, final form tended to necessitate lots and lots and lots of, uh... Lots and lots of sub-tanks. <laughs> Hopefully, I've, I've gotten good enough at, at this after, like, 20 years to not need to, like, burn through four sub-tanks in the final form. I think I took one hit from Velgarder, one from Sigma. That's not doing too bad. Well, I just need you to jump off the wall one more time. There we go. Now I'll just run underneath and await the inevitable. How did his head get over there? I want to know that. I really do. That question haunts my every waking nightmare. So if this... If this looks a little bit familiar, it's because it's based on his little dog friend, Velgarder. In fact, I think this form of Sigma is actually called Velgarder Sigma. And he is weak to... Well, he can only be damaged by two things. He can only be damaged by either... A fully charged buster shot. Purple Sneaky Beam! Good old friend. I never ever miss an opportunity to call it Purple Sneaky Beam. And the Roll Shield, and that's pretty much what we're going to be using. Oh, I can't believe I got hit by that. This is the primary way he's going to go about attacking you. He's going to shoot the little electrified balls at you and hit me a lot. Damn. Oh, and dodging it that time, I got hit. I'm burning through at least one sub-tank here. Let's hope this fight goes better from here on out. So yeah, we'll do the electrified balls. He will breathe fire, which he's doing now. And the best way to deal with any of his attacks is just to sit in the middle of the room and wait to see what he's going to do. That way you can never do exactly the opposite of what I just did to get hit. Because so, if you're sitting in the middle of the room, his fire always starts out on either the left or the right side, and so do the electrified balls he shoots out. And then the claws also only shoot lightning in a vertical line straight down on the left and right sides of the room, and then the claws full, uh, form these platforms for, for you to jump on. And they will also come at you on the in the middle of the room. They'll come down and over. You can also... Time a, time a few wall jumps here. Eee, avoiding fire. Hold on. Okay. You can also time a few wall jumps to get up on the claws as long as they're not shooting lightning and you won't take any damage. Which I'm going to try to do more of here. If I had just done that from the very beginning, this fight would have been over already. But I was just playing it too safe. Ah, I took a hit. Took another hit. What the fuck? Ah, that could have... That could not have gone more poorly. Alright, one more hit to go. Hoping to not burn through another sub-tank. I would be pretty happy with that. Okay, and the fight's pretty much over. And hooray, I get to end the fight being pink. Pink Mega Man is best Mega Man. Pink Mega Man has always been best Mega Man. It is absolutely possible, Sigma.
You know, you could have just continued to work with the humans. It... Mega Man X, in a weird way, raises the question... Raises questions about transhumanism, given that the Reploids are similar in intelligence levels, and they have free will, except in every other way they are completely superior. With Sigma being the chiefest example of that. So it raises the question... Whoop, drop something. What would the humans have to do to keep up? Well, they would have to modify themselves to be more Reploid-like. Or at least to function in more Reploid-like ways. <laughs> Who needs Deus Ex for complex narratives about transhumanism? We have Mega Man X. X was tackling that issue 20 years ago. So the war has ended for now, and peace has been restored, but those who sacrifice themselves for the victory will never return. This game ends on it for such a light-hearted, playful little game that was released in the early, early 90s on the Super Nintendo. That is a really somber, depressing note to end on. And it gets... It gets even more introspective. Was there another way? I mean, for a Super Nintendo game, that's pretty heavy stuff. And again, it's, it feels especially weird for this game. Like, X, the X series always took a slightly, you know, quote-unquote, edgier tone compared to the classic games. But man! <laughs> Was there another way? Their souls lost forever in this pointless war. <laughs> It feels so much like Metal Gear Solid in that way. <laughs> and now we have a tradition that I sorely miss, which is um, preceding the, the developer credits with credits for the enemies in each stage. Like, specifically naming which enemies... It, it, like, naming the enemies. And so while these credits roll, um... When I, f I want to talk about uh, when I first finished X back in the day. So after that, like, I, like I've said many times, I couldn't get enough of it. So somehow I stumbled upon some sites where people were making fan games. Like brand new Mega Man levels with the same familiar sprites that I loved. I just couldn't wrap my mind around it. It was so awesome and it was impossible to me. The, just like the idea of it, someone else is making Mega Man. How? And I would I would figure out how to run these really <laughs> clunky, poorly coded, unintuitive things, and and how to and figure out like how to play them. And they were really, really poorly made. But I was enchanted by them. I was enchanted to be playing Mega Man, and also so mystified by the very idea that that just anybody could be contributing to giving me more of this thing that I loved. Like, it didn't seem like it was possible for just random people to be making this. I thought, no, only the people who make Mega Man are capable of doing such a thing. So it was just, it was a hard idea to wrap my mind around even though they weren't very good. Like, this whole, this early era of, of user-created content and there was something that was just, like, magical about it. Rose-colored glasses, sure, but... Indulging in that nostalgia is something I could sit here and just bathe in all day. Man. Really conjures up wonderful memories, and this Let's Play is... A really great, uh, a vector for me to communicate and share that love and that childhood whimsy. And maybe you're watching and remembering similar stories from your childhood. Or, better yet, you're being mystified by games right now in this era of video games, and that's, that's fucking awesome. So, feel free to share that stuff in the comments, that's, that's always really cool to read. And you as Mega Man X, and no matter how many times I play through that game, that makes me feel all warm and fuzzy seeing that. And this, the, the developer credits here, 
I understand the era and what that meant for for this style of credits. Like this was a common thing back then. It really does disappoint me though, because I would love to know more about the people who made this game, and having this as a barrier, like sound designer Elf, I can't really access that information when I when they used nicknames and stuff like this. Professor F, the producer. Oh, also I was talking about fan games. Can't talk about fan games without bringing up uh, Mega Man X Corrupted, which is shaping up to be prop one of the most promising fan games ever. And it's looking like a true X game, which Capcom has failed to provide for a very, very, very long time. And I hope this gets the cross Street Fighter treatment and Capcom embraces it. It's it's a Metroid style X game instead of so it instead of using the stage select it's a more open world so i'm curious to see how that'll work out i have my reservations about it but i really really i've seen enough of it that it still plays fundamentally like x with a few significant changes that i don't necessarily think will be for the worse there's also some um some leveling rpg type like upgrade systems and again, it, I feel like it would be, I would be remiss if I just doubted corrupt, uh, Corrupted, just on the basis of it being a bit different. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to see how, looking forward to see how the changes will play out. And of course, we end the game with a sequel hook for Mega Man X2 and 3 and 4, and all the games to come, because as we know... Sigma comes back in every single game. But time has run out for this playthrough. Thank you guys for watching. As always, I will see you guys tomorrow for the beginning of Let's Play Demon Souls. Take it easy, guys. Have a good one.